Um, we're having some weird wind stuff going on today, so oops. Um, I'm hoping that doesn't interfere with our signal today, but um, I'm going to try to talk fast because I really do have something exciting to share with you guys this morning. Um, I'm going to hang in just for a few minutes for those that watch this um, after it's recorded. Um, I try to hang on just for a little bit so people can check in. Um, I have friends that are pretty faithful to watch and I appreciate that. So, um, I almost, almost, almost uh, was ready to cancel and not do this today. Yesterday, well actually it started out like Saturday night. I wasn't feeling really good and then Sunday morning I felt okay and then Sunday evening it hit and I just haven't really felt good the last few days and yesterday I was wiped out and um, I think I had some kind of a stomach bug but I think the worst has passed and I woke up alive this morning you know that's that's uh what's the out um oh there's a song he's alive he's alive it's about Jesus but I was thinking thinking that in my head this morning I'm alive I felt like I had slept for like the first time all night long in oh gosh it's been a long time so I'm not a, a great sleeper anyway but whenever anything's going on in my life I tend to lay awake a lot at night and think about things and so it's a good time to pray it's very quiet and still but um, it's can wear down on you after a while so I really did um, need the sleep <laughs> and I I really feel very well rest, rested this morning I got up with my husband this morning when he left for work and I cleaned up my house and I'm planning on playing in my craft room which is where I'm at right now this afternoon I have no obligations to do anything because I did laundry yesterday and um, I do probably need to do some ironing but that shouldn't take too long so um, don't have much on my agenda today and so I thought you know I woke up feeling so good this morning this has to be something that the Lord wants me to do because I can't cancel I feel a little puny just because I didn't eat very much yesterday but um, coffee helps yay coffee so if you're there say hi I just like to know who's watching and um, if it's beneficial to you I'd really love to know that um, you know the Lord put it on my heart when actually when I started do, you know planning to do a blog which was probably a year and a half two years ago um, we were living in the trailer where we moved out into the country and I was excited about chickens and pigs hi baby hi Mary um, good morning to you guys um, I was excited to share my life with everyone you know I'd been kind of journaling on Facebook just sharing with my friends because I have friends all over the place and I, I really appreciate and need the encouragement and so all my friends all over the place were really encouraging to me through that because it was a really hard two years waiting for our house to get here <laughs> so um, I was kind of thinking about journaling and doing a blog about that and then kind of walking you through because we're like city folk and um, we call our place all hat and no cattle ranch because we are all hat and don't know what we're doing we, we might look like we know we know what we're doing but we don't so um, I thought it would be fun to share like our learning experiences and things like that but um, a few months ago I just thought you know I've got to get past this anxiety about live videos I'm my own worst critic about my physical appearance and about my mannerisms and I know I don't really you know I'm not perfect I know um, I don't know I just don't feel qualified a lot of the time but um, one thing that the Lord has kind of drilled into me over the years is God does not call the qualified he qualifies the called and boy does that apply to me because I am not qualified but I do love people and I really do feel like the Lord has given me an ability to relate to people and um, if I can make a connection that encourages and ministers to to people you know it's hard um, these days to make real quality friendships and so um, I understand that and I'm willing to be uh, real and transparent be a friend as much help as I can be online but um, and then encourage people to find fellowship that's kind of my my focus good morning Alyssa hey she goes to my church um, it's been really helpful for me my sister-in-law once told me you know because I was like I don't really know how many people are watching and I feel kind of silly talking to myself 
And it really does help when people chime in and interact. It just makes me feel like I'm not humiliating myself, talking about things that I think are important and nobody else really cares about. But um, I know when I first started out, I was kind of watching the metrics and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand the metrics for one, you know, cause it'll say I have so many views and, but then it's like the three second views and then it's the one minute views. And then there's hardly anybody that watches this start to finish, you know? And, um, and I'm so thankful for you guys that do. Um, I hope you guys, I mean, like if, if, I hope you guys would tell me if I was embarrassing myself, but, um, I think that the Lord is using it. I, I feel better. That's what she said. She's like, if it's, um, it seems to be really helpful for you, you know, especially once things started kind of getting a little rocky in some relationships in my life, um, with my kids, you know, just sharing what the Lord was doing in my heart transparently. It's kind of like talking to yourself is helpful, you know, reminding yourself of what God's word says, talking to yourself about truth and scripture, worshiping, you know, those things are all good for us. I usually have to watch in spurts, lots of distractions. We have like a farm, so I totally get it, but I appreciate that you do watch it, even if it's in spurts. I know it's um, kind of interjected into everybody, the middle of everybody's day, but um, that's why I do post them. Alyssa, I do post them on my website so that you can watch them later if you can't find them on Facebook, but there's, they're also in my video file on Facebook, but um, even still, you probably are having to watch it in spurts because you have to stop and go a lot, but. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm doing this for, for, I want to do it for the Lord, but it's also really good for me. And, um, I hope that it's beneficial to other people. Um, I have a heart for ministry, but I'm too far away from my church to be terribly involved, not terribly, but you know, like very much involved, um, because of the distance. But I think my husband and I are going to start going to the Tuesday night. We just found out there's a men's Bible study and a women's Bible study simultaneously on Tuesday nights. And so I think we're going to start going to that. Um, but then that means we're also going on Wednesday nights for Julie to go to youth group. And so it's a lot of back and forth. So you can kind of understand we live probably, I think it's probably 45 minutes to church. And um, that's a lot of gas and uh, time and stuff. So um, I want to use God, God to use me wherever I'm at. And I did want to do this blog thing because I enjoy writing. Um, I really do enjoy encouraging other people and um so this is one way that i can do it and this kind of comes naturally to me this is easier for me than to sit and try to craft and show you something that i'm doing besides the fact that i'm trying to save money right now so i'm not doing a lot of that i might like zhuzh up some i mean like you can um see this is my mess it was way worse this morning i cleaned it up for you guys but um i i've been painting things i've been experimenting a little bit i'll show you So I have these, I don't like this by the way, but um, which way am I going? This, <laughs> it's, um, it's actually a garland that I made at Christmas. And I have these two wreaths that have pine cones on them. I have them up. I actually, they had buttons and like berries on them for years at my old house. And I used them at Christmas. And then I thought, you know, these don't look bad. I'm going to leave them up all, all year round. And then when we got into the new house, they were starting to look a little dusty. So I pulled off all the buttons and the beads and I glued pine cones on them, but I don't know, I'm not loving it. And so I'm trying to figure out something new for that place where those heart wreaths are. And I was like, I had these heart forms and I thought maybe, but I don't think you can really, if it were bigger, it might work, but like, nah, I don't think so. So I don't know what I'm going to put there, but like, so I do that kind of stuff, but to actually, like, I don't know what I'm doing. So to have somebody watch me kind of experimenting, I don't think that that would be very entertaining. So, um, anyway, I, I, this kind of talk, just talking to my girlfriends, you know, sharing whatever it is that the Lord, I really do get excited about what God is doing in my life. And so to share with someone else, like seriously, my favorite thing to do genuinely. So, um, I'm just going to pray real quick because it's 10 o'clock and um, I picked Tuesdays at 10 with Tammy because I thought, you know, that would stick in people's brains. We'll see how, how it works out. But I have noticed um, that the numbers are increasing, which is really encouraging to my heart. It would help if you guys would share. 
share the video. You know, if you think it's uh, something that will be a blessing to someone else, um, it gets the circulation out there and it helps it to circulate even with the people that I share it with. So the more interest there is in it, the more Facebook thinks, oh, other people will be interested in it and they push it out. So um, if you share, if you like it, if you heart, apparently hearts, I was watching BMAC Rights yesterday and she was talking about how hearts are like even better. So like if you love it, love it, you know, <laughs> give me a little heart. Um, but I appreciate the encouragement and I appreciate your help because I really do want um, to build an audience and I kind of stalled I was doing follow for follow for a while and I was like no I I don't necessarily <laughs> want to interact with all these people I don't want to see this in my feed you know and, and so I would rather share um, with like-minded people and build my audience with people that actually care about what it is that I'm doing and eventually um, you know I, I will start crafting and things so that I can share that with other people I'm better at like pictures I'm not sure how I can multitask that well but I'll try but anyway pray with me about that will you so I'm gonna pray real quick and I'm gonna share what God has to say about the battle belonging to him it's something really neat that the Lord has been showing me so let's pray real quick loving Heavenly Father we thank you again for put for bringing us here together um, for just you know preparing our hearts for whatever it is that you have for us this today and for this week Lord I just pray and ask that you continue to minister encouragement to us to minister hope to our hearts Lord that we would see your hand in all the things that are going on in our lives Lord and that we would trust you Lord grow us in our faith grow us in our relationship with you Lord grow us in our relationship with other believers Lord that we would find hope and encouragement in them and in sharing with them and encouraging them Lord I, I think that's probably the most beneficial thing about this is encouraging other people encourages me and I thank you for those Lord that are faithful to gather here and allow me to try to encourage them because they have no idea what a blessing that is to my own heart Lord I think I need this probably more than than anybody that could watch Lord but I thank you for what you're doing in my life I thank you for what you're doing in other people's lives Lord I know um, several friends have expressed recently about how blessed their hearts are to know that you love them and that you actually do um, hear them when they pray you minister to their hearts in special unique um, ways that just illustrate that it's you and it could be no one else and I just ask that you would pour your, your spirit out pour your spirit out on me today pour your spirit out on those that are listening that they would just feel your love and your presence in a mighty and powerful way um, guide and direct this conversation, Lord. Calm my nerves. Help me to stay focused. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, this is something that I just shared with another friend. Her name is Tammy. She's from String of Pearls. Tammy. And um, she's really sweet. I actually was inspired by her. I don't know that she knows this. I don't know if she watches every time, but I know that she does watch occasionally. But um, I had watched a couple videos that she did. She doesn't do this regularly, I don't think. But I've watched several of her videos where she just shares from her devotional, morning devotional time. And um, I think the first one I watched, she was on a trip with her husband and in a hotel room. And I don't know how she does it, but she puts beautiful music kind of in the background. She doesn't do a live. I don't think it's probably pre-recorded, but um, she just shared her heart. And it just was like sitting with a friend and talking about the Lord. And it was the sweetest, most calming experience it was super encouraging I just was like okay if she can do this I can do this you know and that because that's where my heart's at so Lord use me that way help me to be an encouragement help me to be a friend help me to minister truth to people that are longing for it truth and encouragement and hope and so um, she had posted those videos and I thought you know I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a shot because that's something that I can do without being super distracted by a lot of different objects and shiny things so um, that's how I started last week um, I was on or uh, last Sunday I was on my way to church and she posted a meme and I can't remember what exactly what it said but it basically said don't stress about this I've got it God and um, I went to read the comments now we're on our way to church and I went to read the comments and there were so many ladies in there talking about yes you know I I believe this you know God has got this you know victory 
and I felt like I should share what I'm about to share with you. And I shared it very concisely because I was in the car and on my way to church. So this morning, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on it because I feel like that was the first time that I'd shared it with anybody. And then afterwards, I shared it with my daughter and my husband. And I feel like, you know, I should share this with you guys. So um, most of anybody that's watched this at any length of time knows that I've been going through some stuff with my adult children and how much it can really um, test your faith, you know, and, and I have been growing so much through this. It's hard. It hurts. It's not always, you know, rainbows and unicorns and sunshine and all that. I have really good days and then there are, it's mostly the nights that just the fear grips my heart, you know, and I lay awake and I don't know if you've ever, I, I, I described it to a friend, this desperation. And I, I woke up out of a dead sleep one night and I didn't audibly scream, but in my heart, I was screaming my son's name, God help him, you know? And, um, That is the best way to describe this agony that you, you know, I, I'm sure there are mothers that are watching this that know what I, exactly what I'm talking about. Nobody, I like, that's the worst thing I can imagine is my child hurting. And so there's this anxiety and uh, it's fear and I really struggle with it. And so I do really good some days. I've been doing a lot better than initially. I think it, um, you know, it started in September, um, and it's amped up a couple times. And so I think it, every time that it amps up something, I find out something else that my heart just sinks again, you know, because I get my eyes off Jesus and my eyes on the circumstances and I'm sinking just like Peter when he got out of the boat. And so, um, several friends have encouraged me recently to pray scripture over my children. Um, Friends have talked to me about spiritual warfare. I was given a book about spiritual warfare and like um, going into spiritual warfare for your children. I struggled with it a little bit. There were some good things I gleaned from it and I wrote them down and um, I'm, I'm praying about those things and I'm kind of putting them into practice. But overall, I just struggled with this concept of spiritual warfare on someone else's behalf. I've, I've, I understand spiritual warfare. I've had Satan mess with my mind and had to do that thing where you take captive every thought that opposes you know the truth and um focusing on on what i know is true and and pushing away those lies focusing on worship on prayer on scripture on you know uh pouring teaching godly teaching into my heart through podcasts and stuff like that I, I understand that, but how do you do that for someone else? How do I fight for someone else? So, okay, I'm just gonna get to the story. So what happened was, it was two weeks ago this past Sunday, and uh, we were on our way to church. And in my heart, I'm having this conversation with God. Um, I'm just gonna read him, because I don't wanna start to cry and like lose my train of thought. Two weeks ago Sunday, we were on our way to church, and I was asking the Lord in my heart, what spiritual warfare on another's behalf is supposed to look like? Several friends have given me books and encouraged me to pray scripture for my children. I'd come to understand that praying scripture was more of a way to, for me to wage war against the fear and lies Satan was hurling at me. Um, to remember that God is in control. I've settled on a particular verse to pray in those times for my sons. And it has helped my heart, but it just felt like I wasn't doing enough. You know, I wanted to get my, I wanted to get in there. How much harder can I pray was the thought that passed through my mind. And then it instantly, the thought came to me, the battle belongs to the Lord. And I thought, was that you, Lord? <laughs> you know, I, it was quiet. So I'm like, okay, the battle belongs to the Lord. At church with, I'm not even joking, <laughs> the theme it seemed for worship that morning was the battle belongs to the Lord. We, I, I think we sang the song by Phil Wickham, um, uh, Battle Belongs. 
And then we sing one right at the end of worship from Elevation Worship that uh, is called uh, I'm Going to See a Victory. I think that's what it's called. And as worship was concluding and we began to sing the lyrics, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory because the battle belongs to you, Lord. <laughs> I just lost it. I'm not a super, like, I'm pretty contained at church, you know. Um, I have, I will tear up occasionally, but, like, the full-on blubbering session, I try to keep that <laughs> for behind closed doors. But there was no keeping it in. I just broke. I want to see a victory. I want to see a victory in, in these situations. And, Lord, please let me see a victory. And the, I was weeping. It's funny because my sweet friend was sitting with me with her little boy. And I was tearing up a little bit, you know, earlier. And then she left, and I thought, okay, she's probably gone out with her son for the rest of the worship. So I felt a little bit more at ease to just, I think I relaxed too much. <laughs> because before I knew it, tears and snot, and I'm like looking around, our t church usually has tissues. Do you think I could find any? No. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, Julie, help me. <laughs> you know? so she gives me a tissue, and then my friend comes back in. And I'm like, and then they do the whole, like, now turn to your neighbor and say hello. And I'm like... <laughs> You know, she's like, it's allergies, it's allergies. I was like, yeah, that's it, it's allergies. But you guys, I mean, I probably look like a raccoon because I stopped wearing uh, waterproof eye, uh, mascara like years ago. But um, it hit me like, I think the Lord just answered my question, was that him? This battle belongs to him. The spiritual warfare that I'm waging is in my own heart and trusting him with them and so um i thought i'd share that i just think that that's pretty neat the thing the important key to that is being in fellowship and being in his word you're not going to recognize that if you don't in you know if you're not in fellowship you're not going to get that opportunity to be to be at worship and have that happen you're if you're not in his word you're not going to know the verse <laughs> The battle belongs to the Lord. And although I knew the verse, I didn't know it in context. And this is something neat that just happened yesterday. So that happened Sunday, two Sundays ago. And then I shared um, with my friend Tammy on her page that that had happened this past Sunday. And then yesterday I was feeling so wiped out and sick. So I asked Julie, because we just finished My Day His Way. And we, we, we need another book or something to, to do devotions with. And so I asked her, will you go look at my bookshelf and pick a book, you know, whatever you want. And so she came back and this is the book that she brought me. And it's by the same author, sorry, it's Carol Hobson, but God, this wasn't my plan. Okay. And so, um, you know, we started out with prayer and we pray for our loved ones and we always lift up our boys. Um, and then we started to read the first chapter and the first chapter is on this weird cliffhanger and i'm like that is the dumbest way to is <laughs> like no offense carol hobson if you ever happen to see this but honestly like that first chapter made no sense the way that it ended what she was sharing was about it opens up with her talking about how they're building this beautiful playhouse for their granddaughters to play in in their backyard and that they had you know been in ministry for 35 34 years and they were finally settling down like they were finally getting to that point where they were looking forward to retirement and their kids didn't like one kid lived within 20 minutes i think the other one was like 45 minutes away and their families frequently gathered at their home for fellowship and they love their grandbabies and this was just such an exciting time in their lives and they had been in the ministry um like i said for 34 years part of that was um in christian education they started uh they had just started a school in Solvent. well not just they had started a school in Solvent, california and i think it had been like 15 years and and it had finally succeeded and was going really well and it things seemed like things were really coming together finally and so she says that um her husband gets a phone call from another state i think it was washington and this guy wants him to come and be the superintendent for his school and she's like well you told him no right and he's like yeah but she sensed his yeah was not as enthusiastic as it should have been and so she said um i think it just led to her praying like lord if 
I, I'm comfortable. I like my life here. This is easy and I really, I just want to stay here. But I want what you want for me because I know that's what's best. That will, that will bring my heart the most fulfillment ultimately. And so I'm going to pray and ask the Lord. Julie, did somebody knock? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pray and ask the Lord for his will to be done and for him to prepare my heart. If that's what he's going to do, if we're fixing to move. And um, then she goes back to the, the, the playhouse and, but it didn't make any sense, you know? And so we started, I was like, we have to read chapter two because I need to know how this is resolved, you know? So we read chapter two and basically she was talking about how it looked like the Lord was going to open the doors for them to move to, I think it was Seattle, Washington. She was not super excited about it, but she was open to the Lord changing her heart. And so she was asking the Lord to do that. So we get to page 18 of this book. It's like, uh, still the beginning of chapter two. Um, and she, I'm going to read this. It says, I'm reminded of one of my Old Testament stories found in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, was living in peace and prosperity and leading his people to worship God. Things were going well for him and life was good. I can identify with that. In a moment, everything changed for him because he received word that the Moabites, Ammonites, and others were coming against him to do battle. Verse 1. All of a sudden, his circumstances had changed. Life was uncertain and he was afraid. I've been afraid many times in my life and can only imagine what was going through Jehoshaphat's mind. He was responsible for all these people, for their safety, their future, their families, and the situation seemed impossible. The armies coming up against him were far greater than what he could, he could muster up. But the interesting thing about Jehoshaphat was what he did with his fear. Verse 4 says that he set himself to seek the Lord. Rather than letting his emotions take over, he sought the Lord, the only one who could help him. It seems that Jehoshaphat didn't waste his time and energy on worry, depression, or despair because he made a choice to turn his heart to the Lord. He also greatly affected those around him by his decision to put the problem on the Lord, and he didn't miss the opportunity God had given him to show God's power in this very difficult circumstance. So rather than having his people all focusing on the impossibility of the situation, they were focusing on the God of the impossible, verses 3 to 6. Then, rather than let the devil get an entrance through the door of doubt, Jehoshaphat began reminding the people and himself of God's faithfulness and power in the past. And she quotes 2 Chronicles 20, verse, uh, verses 6 through 7. O Lord of God, sorry, Lord God of our Father, art not thou God in the heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art thou not our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And added to that, Jehoshaphat, as the leader of God's people, affirmed his commitment to God in the middle of the problem. No circumstances had changed. The armies were still coming. His comfort zone had definitely been interrupted, and he didn't have an answer. But again, he made an important choice. After worshiping God in front of the congregation, congregation Jehoshaphat proclaimed, We are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on thee. Verse 12, emphasis added. Oops. Now there's something we can all do. It's a choice we can make when faced with interruptions and difficulties. We can choose to keep our eyes on God, and doing that keeps us from focusing on our circumstances. 2 Timothy 2.4 states, No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life, that he may please the one who enlisted him. Dwelling on the circumstances always entangles us. Uh, sorry and causes us to stumble in the race, but focusing on the goal, which is pleasing the Savior, will always bring us victory. The victory will be the peace in our hearts because of our right relationship with the Lord. Isn't this sweet, you guys? Do you see the like tie-ins? <laughs> Am I alone in this? Someone once said, nothing can make a trusting Christian fear. The key word is trusting. If we're trusting, we're not afraid. If we're afraid, we're not trusting. After God saw what choices Jehoshaphat made, he gave great words of comfort to him through Jehaziel. Do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. You not, need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves, stand, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. 
2 Chronicles 20, 15, and 17. Did you notice that God didn't tell Jehoshaphat what his plan was? He didn't say, I'm going to defeat them, so don't worry. Or, I won't let a single sword touch your people, so don't fear. He simply said, do not fear, for the Lord is with you. That was enough to give him peace. Why is that so hard for me? Why do I wonder if I can possibly be happy in a place where I know no one and have no ministries and no family and where it rains a lot, but where God will be with me? Do you wonder how you can be worry-free in your situation? Usually we think that being worry-free is knowing how everything is going to work out and liking the solution. Man alive, is that true? Uh, then we can trust God, but that isn't trusting. That's having it all figured out and then deciding that what God is going to do is okay with us. What really brings joy to our Father is steadfast obedience in spite of our situation. Tomorrow, go out and face them were the next instructions from the Lord. That's not exactly what I feel like doing when I'm worried or afraid or don't like what's going on. It feels better to walk away from the problem rather than deal with it directly. But God says, go out and face the problem with me. Psalm 16.8 is a wonderful passage that tells us how to do just that. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. This means facing our problems through the Lord. If I have truly set the Lord continually before me, he is in front of the problem as I view it. And that keeps my focus on him and his power and ability to deal with my situation. My only responsibility in any area is a right response to his ability. My favorite part of this story is the ending. I think if I were Jehoshaphat, I would have been forming battle plans, having target practice, and sharpening swords at this point. But Jehoshaphat felt led to assemble a choir of all things. He instructed them to go out and sing and praise God. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Verse 21. Many, of times I've, many times I've tried to figure out what God would do or what he should do, and sometimes there just hasn't been any answer that I could see. Oh my gosh, this is what I do, like late at night, and sometimes in the middle of the day. He didn't have a battle I'll say It seems that Jehoshaphat's situation was like that. He didn't have a battle plan, and no other armies were lining up to help him. Humanly speaking, it was an impossible situation. But our God of the impossible showed himself in an amazing way. For while they were being obedient by praising God, this is a, verses 22 to 24, it says, The Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. So they were routed. For the sons of Ammon and Moab rose up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, destroying them completely. And when they had finished with the inhabitants of Mount Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When Judah came to the lookout of the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and behold, they were corpses lying on the ground, and no one had escaped. You know, in all of my imaginations, I never would have dreamed up that ending. That's what's so exciting about keeping our eyes on God and watching what he's going to do. The enemies actually turned on each other and killed each other without Jehoshaphat's people lifting a weapon. They were involved only in worship and praise and left the impossible to God. Can you imagine how their faith in God increased and what stories spread throughout the land? Look at verse 29, it says. There were also great blessings because of their obedience. First, they were able to take all the spoils from the fallen armies, which took them three days to collect. And secondly, their kingdom was rewarded with peace verses 25 to 30. As I pondered this story, I knew that God could do the impossible for me too. But I had to be willing to worship and praise in the midst of this decision-making process, or I would have missed an opportunity to be used by him and possibly miss his leading. My heart was telling me that we were already serving the Lord right where we were, and there was no reason to even consider this move. But I had prayed to God because of how comfortable and happy I was that he would make it so clear to us if he ever wanted us to leave our ministry in Solvang. I asked that he would bring someone knocking our, on our front door so I'd know it was from him. I'd ask almost jokingly, but also seriously, because of my desire to know God's will. I can't say that it was a knock on my front door, but to be on my way to church and ask that question in my heart, not out loud, and to know he heard me. He heard me, he sees me, he hears, he, he feels for me. He understands and he wants to comfort me. How amazing and sweet is that? God loves me 
He loves you too. And he can minister that same kind of encouragement to you if you are looking for it, if you're going to the right places for it. It's not in the world. It's going to be found in, in godly things, church, fellowship with other believers, his word, Christian encouragement, you know, podca- ministry podcasts, those kinds of things. It's just, like I mentioned before, there's a theme. There's a theme. There's always these themes, and I, and I know that that's the Lord talking to me, you know. Um, one thing is for sure, he's never going to contradict his word. If you think you heard something from God and it contradicts God's word, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And you better not touch it. You better repent for pretending that that was God and ask God to forgive you and and get in his word so you know what it, what he actually has to say. Um, you know, a lot of times, like that verse, the, the battle belongs to the Lord. I grew up in church. I've heard that story before. Um, I've heard the songs, the battle belongs to the Lord. So when that verse, when that reference popped into my mind, I asked the question, was that you, Lord? And he answered me when we got into church and we started singing these songs. Bill Wickham's song, um, if you Google, I'll share the song on my pages, uh, so, both songs on my page later, but the lyrics, just how can you listen to them when you're in the middle of a spiritual battle? And you know, I can't fight the battle for my sons. I can pray for them. I'll share with you what I've been praying for them. So I don't believe, you know, in twisting scripture um, to apply it as a promise. You know, if it was a promise to Israel, it's a promise to Israel. I can't take that and try to manipulate it into a prayer as a promise, like God owes that to me for my children. That's not how it works. But I can pray in accordance with God's word. And so as I was reading, so I, I, the friend gave me the first book, I took notes, and then I gave that book back, so I can't reference that one. But um, I do have another book that, and, another friend gave me on praying scriptures for your children she kind of points that out like we are praying to get our hearts in line with what god wants for our children so um one of the verses she was she was basically saying you know like uh, our heart is not to see our children suffer so when they are in rebellion and they are suffering we might want to pray god you know end their suffering but god opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble that's from james 4 6. so in God's opposition, he is being kind. When we see our children suffering in their sin, that is the mercy of God trying to bring them to repentance. So um, I, I shared James 4, 6. I wanted to read from Romans chapter 1, and um, I'm going to start at verse 16. And I'm getting to the, the purpose of reading this is because I want to show you the goodness of God in opposing us when we're evil, when we're when we're sinning. Um, so I'm just going to read. <laughs> I want to elaborate. Okay, so um, I'm going to start at verse 16. The just shall live by faith. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. If you know to do right and you don't do it, that's sin. It means you know it and you're doing wrong anyway. You're suppressing the truth with your unrighteousness. Pretty cut and dry. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies amongst amongst themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions for even their women exchanged their natural use or the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman 
burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who do those do the same, who practice them, sorry. This is chapter two. Make sure I'm still recording. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are to judge, for in whatever you judge one another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who, pra who judge those things practice, I'm sorry, who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? It's a really good chapter. You should read the rest of it. <laughs> um, God doesn't mess around with sin. If In order to participate in sin willfully, you are being prideful. And God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humility comes when you've come to the end of yourself. Like the prodigal son, he was willing to go work for his dad just to get out of his circumstance because he realized what a mess he'd made. And it would be better, even though his dad had no obligation to him, just to be an employee of his dad, because his dad was a good man. That's God. God is, God is a good father. He will forgive us, and he has way more for us than just a job. He wants to bless us with, with things, you know, that we don't deserve. We don't, we're not entitled to. Um, so in our wickedness, I know in my personal experience, when I was in pride and I, I was rebelling against God, God opposed me and it brought me to my knees in humility, in repentance, ready to turn my back on what I was doing and turn towards God and do things his way. And so when I was like, okay, I'm supposed to pray scriptures for my children that get my heart in line with God, what verse could I pray? Lord, Oppose my children in their pride until it makes them humble enough to, to repent, to seek your mercy and grace. Oppose them, whatever it takes. I trust you. I can, you know, it's hard to watch. Thankfully, you know, I am somewhat uh, distanced. I think that that's why there is a distance there because it's hard to watch. I can't. I, I made this statement once about, you know, like, at least I don't have a front row seat for the train wreck, you know, about someone's life, you know, like, I, I thank God that I don't have to be there to see every, every way that God is opposing them. Um, I, I wrote, after reading that book on spiritual warfare, one of the things that I wrote down, but it was hard for me. Um, she wrote, Lord, open my eyes and understanding to, be, to see beyond the natural realm. And I was like, oh, do I want to see that? That seems like that would be terrifying. Like, I understand there's some things going on spiritually. I am, I am not capable to, to, to take on those things. But God is. God is. And I really, you know, there are some things you can't unsee. There are some things you can't unknow. And I am thankful. Ignorance is bliss. As far as I'm concerned, I, I trust God enough to, I don't need to see that. I don't want to, I don't want to see that kind of demonic activity. You know, if my loved one is, is, uh, at risk of spending eternity in hell, can you imagine the forces that they are messing with? I don't want to see that. I want to keep my eyes on the God that I know that is bigger than that that is bigger than that darkness, that is bigger than that evil. And I want to 
I want to trust him that I'm going to see a victory. I know um, in my case, you know, my sons have known Jesus. I've explained gospel, the gospel and salvation. Um, I've explained that, you know, as for, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And, you know, there, um, there was an incident just a few years ago where I feel like we may have compromised, um, you know, uh, I'm just going to read this just because there are other parents out there and you might be up against this and no one has ever explained it to you. You've never, you don't know how to get counsel on the situation. And, um, I always forget which one it is. Let me look this up right quick. So this kind of parallel um, kind of goes with what I'm saying. First um, Corinthians chapter five um, is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality is not is is not even named among the Gentiles. That a man has his father's wife, so he was having a relationship with his stepmother. And you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. So they were tolerating him in his church as he professed faith and he did this perverse thing, okay? Uh, for I indeed as absent in body, but present in spirit have already judged as though I were present, him who has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. It's almost like praying what I just prayed. Lord, oppose them. Do Have your will, do what you've gotta do. I know it's not gonna be pretty, but I trust that you will work it together for their good once they've repented and um, surrendered their life to you. So deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That's what's most important. Not them not hurting, not them having an easy life. It's they need Jesus. Jesus, I, I am a, a believer in the rapture and I believe Jesus can come back any minute. There's nothing stopping him from coming back. And my kids are playing with fire and that concerns me. It keeps me up at night. I pray a lot about it. And I'm hoping that it concerns them because they know. And they may be in rebellion and trying to, to deceive themselves. But we just read in Romans, they're not deceiving themselves. They know better. Um, so, and, and basically, he's talking about, you know, the sin it's, that you've allowed in your church, it's going to pollute the whole church. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. But... That's not actually the passage I was going to read. So, um, sorry, guys. Um, um, let me Google it right quick, okay? And my husband's texting me. Um, my daughter got a new computer and she needs help and I don't think he realizes what I'm doing so hang on just a second I'm gonna read this one verse then I'll pray okay so uh, oops so talking about people who claim to be Christians and they're living in unrepentant willful sin um, it is first Corinthians 5 verse verse 11 I was in the right chapter First Corinthians 5. This is hard to do. I understand. But um, first, I, so I didn't read far enough yet. So uh, immorality must be judged. It's, it's chapter 5, verse 9. I'm going to start there. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous, covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother, someone who professed faith, um, who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not to even eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those who are who, those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. It's a tough thing to do, but it really is kind of putting them in God's hands. 
And most of the time they make that, that choice for you. When people are living in sin, I mean, I know when I was living in sin, um, I wanted to avoid talking about it. You know, like I was pretending like what I was doing wasn't sin because a person claimed to be a Christian. But I had, I knew better. I knew better because I'd seen the red flags. I'd seen his character and I knew better. So, um, but the thing is, you know, I wanted to avoid people that were going to get to the, the heart of the matter. Those people that in your life, you know, um, I'm probably one of those people <laughs> for some people. Um, I ask the hard questions because I love you too much. If you're my friend, I love you too much to let you hurt yourself. If I see something that's concerning to me, I'm not being judgmental. You know, we did read about judgment, but the, the same Bible that says that about judging, it, it, he, he's talking to people who you want to judge other people, but you're doing, you're committing the same sin. That's what that passage was talking about in Romans. Don't even play that game with God. God knows your heart. But the same Bible that talks about, you know, not judging lest you be judged also says to judge righteous judgment. So I, I don't make judgments. I do. I have on plenty of occasions, okay. But I'm, I'm not talking about my personal judgment. When I come to a friend, um, I'm telling them what God's word says. And I'm warning them about what God's word says because God's way is the best way. I know this from experience because I've done things my own way and I don't want you to learn the hard way. So especially in relationship to my children, to my friends, my family, um, my heart is gonna be to tell them Look, this is what God's word says. You know, um, how do you how do you reconcile this as a believer? And with people that aren't believers, I love them and I tell them what God's word says because I'm appealing to them to surrender their life to Christ and do things His way. But I will fellowship with anybody. I'm not gonna like cut people off because you know if they're not saved. My my goal is to bring them away from that. But people who have been saved who have professed faith, who have, who've known faith their whole lives, who are living in sin, they, they don't need me to tell them that. I, I tell them the truth and then they avoid me usually. Um, but then, you know, there are times where you might need to, to set a boundary and say, no, nope. you know, um, when it comes to having children that are in sexual relationships with somebody they're not married to, do you invite that person to live in your house? I can see how the temptation might be to do that, especially if there are children or something involved, but we just read what God's word says. We're not even supposed to eat with them if they call themselves a believer, if they called themselves a believer and they're doing this. They are in rebellion to God and we need to trust them in God's hands. Um, I, I never did like that um, reference to turn them over to Satan. I don't, I don't like that. There's something in it just freaks me out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I understand what it means and that is, you know, basically like, they want, they want to do things Satan's way, let them do Satan, things Satan's way. And then God, God will pursue them. God will get their attention. If they knew the truth once, they know it now. We just read in Romans that there, there's no, um, they know, everybody knows. Everybody on some level knows there's this a, accountability we have to a higher being. And, um, so I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling a lot, but um, is anybody still there? Looks like I have two viewers. I don't know. But um, if if you watch this back on the replay, if you um, have questions or comments, if you want to, you know, if you want me to elaborate on something, if you feel like I'm wrong, hey, I can handle it. You know, I I am not huge on debates, but um, I will definitely share what it, why you know from God's word. I will share why it is that I feel the way that I do. But, um, you know, what uh, fellowship does light have with darkness um, other than to try to illuminate the darkness? But at some point we have to set a boundary because, you know, bad company corrupts good morals. I've seen this in my personal experience and, you know, in other areas. You know, um, letting that person... Hi, you're welcome, Mary. Thank you. That is so sweet. Thank you. I look forward to like sharing. I, you know, you can interact if you want. I totally would love that. But, um, I, you know, I'm just sharing honestly from my heart. Fellowship with people that um, are in willful, unrepentant sin is something that I think we may have made a mistake with when our, a couple years ago. And I think that that may have contributed to this um, some of the issues that we're struggling with right now. And uh, 
that, that was a compromise. You know, it wasn't in my house, but it was close enough. And, you know, there, there were some issues there because the person professed faith and everyone acknowledged them as a believer while they were living in willful, unrepentant sin. And you can't do that. You, there's, there's no way that, that the Holy Spirit dwells in you while you are living in willful, unrepentant sin. You better check yourself, you know. Um, hi, Abby. Good morning. Um, you know, you can't play games with God. God knows your heart. And uh, so, you know, he'll give you space to repent if you are a believer. But if you're willing to live in, in willful, unrepentant sin, when you know that this grieves the Holy Spirit of God, there's no way you'd be able to, I, I just don't know how you'd sleep at night. How do you sleep at night? So um, that's, that's what I wanted to share. The battle is not mine. I can't change anyone's heart. I can't save anyone. You know, I've had um, people try to bring people to me because they think I'm going to, I know some kind of magic words <laughs> that are going to convict them and make them repent. That's not me. That, that, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. That's the Holy Spirit's job. I couldn't do it if I wanted to. If I, and I have tried. I have tried to be the Holy Spirit for other people. Just doesn't work. Only makes them mad. Okay. So like, I don't, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend that at all. You can share people the share the truth with love. You can even set boundaries and be firm, but you cannot be the Holy Spirit. You cannot convict them. That is the Holy Spirit's job. He will do it his way in his time. And you know, they, they may be especially hard and hard hearted. <laughs> oh man. It's, it's hard not to try to be the Holy Spirit sometimes for some folks, right? Evie? But, um, because we love them and we want them to, 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 we see the potential. I, I saw BMAC, um, Bridget Mack talking about this one time and how we, we just love people for their, for their potential. And I did this, especially when I was younger, you know, you just adopt somebody because you want to see something change, but they never have any genuine personal interest in praying for themselves and, and knowing what God's word says for themselves. They always want you to do the work for them. They want you to, to pray for them. They want you to tell them what God's word says, but then they don't do anything once they know what God's word says about their situation. So, you know, you have to, that's like a spiritual drain and it distracts you from other things that God does want you to do. People that do need your help that will receive counsel. So, I mean, that is something I wanted to share from last week. I feel like I missed this part. And that is when we step into positions that God has not called us to, we are actually depriving the person he wants there from that position. So if that doesn't help you feel free, amen, right? If that doesn't free you up to say no sometimes, um, you know, if your heart is in serving people, or in serving the Lord, not people, but in serving the Lord, and you are actively trying to find ways to do that in a way that does not take you away from what God has called you to already, what you know and have established as your calling in life, um, you know, you, you can be willing to try things, but you can also say no if it's not working. And I think that that's something that um, we don't really talk a lot about. And, and I don't know if you've ever tried to say no. I have actually tried to say, this is not working. I can't do this. And been met with some pretty strong, um, I'm just a very sensitive person anyway, but um, I really don't like to disappoint people. And that was really hard for me. So whenever I met the opposition in trying to quit, I just can't do this. It, it really was hard. So I think a lot of pro people probably are afraid of that kind of um, judgment and stuff. You know, if you're saying I can't do this, I, I'm not saying I don't love the Lord. I'm not saying I, I'm not going to serve him in other capacities. I've always been down for, I'll, I'll do your church website. I'll do your ministry website. I've, I've done ministry websites for ministries I'm not involved in just because I love the Lord and I love that ministry and I'll do whatever you want. Graphic design, you know, like if, if I have time, I, I will volunteer for those kinds of things. Worship team, I am there. I love to sing. I love to worship. And it's something that, you know, I can do and then sit down with my family in church, you know. So um, God has a calling on all of us, but all of us aren't called to the same thing. And um, we need to be sensitive to this Holy Spirit. We need to not try to be the Holy Spirit for other people. And um, so, yeah. I think I got off track, but I think that made sense. Anyway, um, you guys, God loves you. I just want to reiterate over and over again that he has a plan and a purpose for everything that's going on in your life. And if you will look to him, he will help you to at least have some peace. If you don't understand it all, this side of heaven, he will give you peace and um, 
hope through it, um, but he might also open your eyes to see some things about what's going on in your life so that you can learn and grow your life lived in, uh, in accordance to God's will. I mean, that's the best way to live. And otherwise, you're kind of resisting him and you're just fighting the inevitable. You know, God wants, I mean, you can, re you can fight him all the way till, till you die and you end up in hell. But ultimately, the best way to live your life is the way that God wants you to live it. And so the sooner you surrender, the sooner you can be blessed, you know. I don't know why anybody would not want to do this, but um, so that's, that's where my heart's at. Wow. I've been talking for an hour. This is the longest one I think I've done. But anyway, I hope it was good. Amen. I appreciate the encouragement. I appreciate the help just talking to me, Evie. Oh, I love it when you come. <laughs> and uh, anybody else want to interact, ask questions, comments? You know, I like I said, there is a delay, but I will definitely try try to respond. So I'm going to pray real quick, and then I'm going to dismiss. If you guys want to um, send me a message, I'd love to to talk, so you can do that. Lord, we just thank you for this time again to, to be together, to fellowship over your word, Lord, to just focus on the truth and the hope and the encouragement that we can find there. Every time we open that book, God, you meet us there and you have something to say to us. And um, what a sweet and awesome privilege that is, God, just to fellowship with you over your word. Um, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you for what you're doing in those that, that are um, in my life, Lord. I just pray now that you bless them, encourage them, grow them, strengthen them, Lord, challenge them, and do the same for me. And bring us back together again next week that we can share that hope and encouragement, that we can praise you together. We thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you too, Evie. Love you guys. See you next week. <laughs>